Hey, what's up everyone? We're back with another tutorial in Cubase Pro. Today I'm gonna to give you just a quick bass mixing tip. It's what I do in my bass template. You saw it at the top of the video. But before we get into it, I just wanna say, you know, all that slapping and popping the... Like, you're not gonna be doing that the majority of the time. So if we just jump into Cubase right now, um, I'm just gonna delete what I did. We'll do something that you'd be more likely to play, you know, in a real situation. So, we'll just kill that track that I recorded at the top and record something new, something more along the lines of what you would do. And I'll just uh, just record the first version and I'll show you what I do with this little mixing trick. So it goes like this, like. Okay, close enough. So that's more along the lines of what you'd be recording for like a real bass line. I think that, you know, you're not always just constantly thumping and popping. So there's no reason to sort of test bass in a store like that. I mean, I know it's fun to uh, play slap bass, but most of the time you'll be asked to be playing, you know, the notes of the, uh, the chords and stuff if you're playing bass on tour or with a band or anything. So let me put this away real quick and we'll get into the tutorial part of the video. Okay, so as you can see, I have two uh, bass tracks, bass one and bass two in my rock and roll template. And uh, the thing about these is that they could just as easily be called bass DI and bass amp. So I could mic up, I have an amp behind me, it's a Sun Coliseum bass, and I could mic that up and record it at the same time as the DI and then uh, blend the two signals. Or in this case, what I did was I just added an instance of VST bass amp and um, and that's the trick that I want to show you today. So if you, uh, if you record an amp live in the room, like, let's just take this and duplicate it down. If you hold control, it'll lock it into place. And if you hold alt, it'll copy it. Boom. Well, if you record an amp in the room, you might get phasing issues. And now this is perfectly in phase because I just duplicated it to the exact same spot on the track below. But if you recorded an amp, the amount of time it would take the sound to come out of the amp speaker into the mic, go through the interface, uh, would be slightly longer than the amount of time it would take just to record a DI. So this might be delayed by a few milliseconds and you get phased. So let me just undo that. This is what a normal uh, bass would sound like. That's in phase. Now if we move this back, to where the peaks are in the valleys and the valleys are in the peaks, which will happen if you record an amp in the room, it'll sound like this. And it's a subtle difference, but the thing is, it'll take away a lot of power from your bass guitar in the mix if it's out of phase. And of course, there are no wrongs and rights in recording. I'm sure there's an engineer out there that could make a phasey bass sound great, just like there's a chef out there that can make cold french fries taste great. But for the most part, what you wanna do is fix any phasing issues before you move on. But of course, in this instance, since we're just using the same track copied down and using a, a VST bass amp, it doesn't really matter. So this is the whole trick that I wanted to show you today. You record a DI signal, and then you move it onto a second track so you move it down, you hold control to lock it in place and alt to copy it. And then you have two tracks. Well, the first is the DI signal, we can solo that. And then we can just have just the amp signal. And so the, the trick for today is to mix these two signals. And you can do that here in the mix console. As you can see, I have bass DI, bass amp. And if we, uh, let me just go back and sort of do a loop real quick. So we'll cut this here and here. We'll select it and then we'll hit P and that'll lock our markers to our selection and we'll hit the divided by key and that'll loop it. 
Okay, now we can work with it. So you may want more of the just raw instrument sound, and by that you'd pull, you'd pull down some of the amp. It's just blending to taste. But as you can hear, the DI has much more of a clicky, raw instrument sound, whereas the bass could be more full. And of course, if you're using VST Bass Amp or a third-party library, let's just pause this for a second, um, this serves as your first EQ. Now, you may also have some unwanted frequencies in your DI signal, and you can add a, like a, an EQ here and do stuff to it to, uh, to process it. But for the most part, what I'll do is send these two bass tracks, and if we look up here, um, they're both going to a bass bus, and I'll treat this bass bus as if it were the bass track. So I'll do my corrective EQ and my compression here. Uh, I'm not sure if that's the right way to do it. There's no right or wrong way to do it, but that's just how I visualize it in my head. So I start off by blending the direct signal with the amp. Then once I have a blend that I like, I can come in here and maybe add an EQ and do some corrective EQs. So we'll take this, we'll make it a high Q, do some sweeps. Maybe eliminate some of that, so we'll... Some of that finger noise. Uh, maybe do a uh, low pass. And of course, in the context of a mix, you would be listening very closely to your bass with the kick drum and maybe carving out a little kick in the EQ or even setting up a sidechain compression bus. And I have a video on that. I'll put it up in the corner about using sidechain compression. Um, and you could also, you know, add your compression at this point. Uh, one compressor that works really well for bass is the vintage compressor. It's sort of like Steinberg's version of a, a 1176. Parallel knob here. And of course, you can compress the stages as well if you want to compress on the tracks. But just having a, and then you could also add a distortion or whatever. A great one that works for uh, bass is the quadrifuzz, it's like a multi band saturation. get the idea uh, but that's just my tip for the day I like to have two tracks uh, the DI typically is more clicky more instrumenty and the, the bass you sort of can dial in more bass like tones but mixing them to form my final bass track in a rocks context is really the technique I wanted to show you today so I hope you all have found this useful if you have feel free to hit like and subscribe and hey take care of yourselves everyone and until next time peace